All right, now, everybody, quiet, listen to me. We're going to start a show. How about that podcast? <laughs> yeah! <laughs> that podcast, though. Alright, so, welcome Did to... Did he pull the trick? Can I get through the fucking here? title of this podcast, please? <laughs> I'm recording already. <laughs> oh, you didn't say anything! I know, I, I like to catch you by surprise, so... it's Say the, fucking the... action or something. No, I, li- <laughs> I, like, I like the rambling intros because it feels more natural. <laughs> anyway... Oh, okay. Uh, all right. Well, welcome to the Incompetent Club podcast. My name is JD, and that's Go Andy. Kyle. And, that's Andy and Kyle, by the way. Because I will be Kyle <laughs> for the day. The part of Andy will be played by Andy. All that's right. me. <laughs> okay, good. We've established who we are. We can move on. Uh, anyway, uh, the Incompetent Club podcast is a weekly podcast in which the three of us talk about cartoons, and other things, animation and or comic or art-wise, whatever we feel like talking about. What, if, what about video games? Video games, too. Sure, we can talk about video games. Why not? What about comics? He I said, said comics, you ass! Oh, I wasn't listening. <laughs> you not. Uh, so, uh, if this is your first time, welcome. Uh, if at the end of the show you enjoyed whatever the hell this is, uh, we would really appreciate it if you would share it on your social medias so we can build our listener base, uh, and I will post links to all our various social medias in the description. Uh, I don't want to blank on so much, I'm usually pretty good at this. Uh, so this week, uh, starts our new schedule, as I kind of said at the news show that I posted before this, uh, that we will no longer be doing news at the beginning of the topic podcast shows, uh, it'll just be straight Whatever we're talking about this week, uh, the new show is its own show, so go listen to that, which should be posted before this, or at the same time. I don't know. It depends on what I get done this week. And it's got a delightful title card to it. You'll you'll love it. I It's new, it's shiny, and I think it's actually better than the one for this podcast. <laughs> I mean, I don't know. I, I, I think Kyle should grow a mustache like that. Kyle can grow a mustache. I have grown a mustache before. Oh. No, but I mean, just that. Just... Just get that mustache. <laughs> so, I, I even like shaved a Hitler mustache too, but well, it was a delightful <laughs> Chaplin mustache. Well, we don't want you to look like Hitler. Uh, Speak for yourself. <laughs> anyway, I do believe we were going to talk about Gravity Falls this week. Woo! Sad. It's nothing you need to concern yourself with. It's uh, that good show that doesn't have... It's the insane... show that I believe is keeping the Disney Channel afloat. The one without <laughs> space rocks that are lesbians? So, uh... I agree, though. Yeah, so, if you haven't watched Gravity Falls, do you not have cable? And if you don't, then do it like me and watch it online. <laughs> Uh, should we should we give a little bit of background of what Gravity Falls is? Yeah, I mean, probably. I'm right. sure people know, but it doesn't okay. hurt. All right, so uh, Gravity Falls was a show made back or starting back in 2012. Uh, it's a show about uh, these two these these twins, uh, Dipper and Mabel, who go to this buttfuck nowhere town to stay with their great uncle Stan who runs a, a, what is essentially a sideshow kind of a tourist It's a tourist trap. trap. It's a tourist trap, yeah. And, you know, as this, the show goes on, just weird paranormal buffoonery goes on, and there's big conspiracies, and there's a lot of homework involved. <laughs> I'll put it that way. Best synopsis ever. Yeah, Best really. Thing. Kind of struggled um, on that one. Sorry. But, uh, the show is created by Alex Hirsch, who, uh, some of you may know, worked on 
Slapjack before they split that show up and pretty much anyone who worked on that show got their own show. Like, seriously, like, J.G. Quintal and Penn Ward and Alex Hirsch all worked on Misadventures of Flapjack, and now they have their own critically acclaimed shows. I mean, I think Gravity Falls probably, I mean, in my opinion, has set the standard. Yeah. I, I remember back in the day of DeviantArt, Ugh. seeing Alex Hirsch's DeviantArt and being like, this guy's kind of cool. And then he's <laughs> in Hollywood making cartoons. Kyle looked at that guy and was like, Pfft. This clown, he won't go anywhere. <laughs> yeah. No. Boy, was I wrong. Yeah. <laughs> Boy, is my face red. <laughs> but, um... I mean, basically the show is... I don't know. I, I just... It's another one of those shows that started off really, you know, simple. It seemed like it was going to be kind of, you know, random, goofy humor every week. But it... As time went on, it kind of pulled Adventure Brothers in the sense that it sort of established its own mythology. And in the last season, it's really, 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 it really gets dark. <laughs> like I, 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 mean, constantly, it, I constantly question the, the why is this a kids show? It gets <laughs> dark, but it doesn't. Unlike a lot of other shows that suddenly try to like pull that, like it feels natural. Oh, it feels natural. It, does not mean and it I, doesn't. It, 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 I still yeah. don't think it should be marketed towards children. <laughs> I think it should be marketed towards children. It's not that off. It's uh, not. It's not that bad. I, d- I just know that like the ch- the kids shows I watch as a kid. I don't think they can get away with that kind of stuff. But I'm actually glad that they can nowadays. <laughs> you mean like Ren and Stimpy that didn't get away with? Yeah. Once I again, really, severed I... head, severed head fairy. Yeah. I didn't really watch that much Ren and Stimpy as a child. I think my dad watched it more than I did. <laughs> This guy didn't grow up in the 90s, am I right? I was... It was a good show! <laughs> it was a good show. I love you, Kino <laughs> Joe. Uh, but anyway, uh... Yeah. So, what else can we say about Gravity Falls to fill this hour? I mean, I honestly think it's... I think we're good. Let's cut it. <laughs> <laughs> I think it sets the gold standard for how a cartoon should honestly go about being funny, being dark. And I just, I don't know. The show to me just sets the standard. Like right now it's like you said, Disney's main thing. It's what's keeping them. It's what's keeping Disney XD and like Disney channel cartoons alive. I can drink to that. Like I, I can see that that is the reason why Disney, because I don't think people are tuning in to watch pickle and peanut. Well, you know, (laughs) I'm, I mean, I, I, I'm also tuning in to watch Star Wars and the Forces of Evil, but I don't think it's gotten up to nearly where Gravity Falls is. <laughs> well, no, well, obviously you have to consider Gravity Falls. I don't know. Like, the show just amazes me with its balance, because unlike another show, which Kyle briefly touched on earlier, like <laughs> a lot of cartoons nowadays, they try to pull the whole, you know, let's have an established kind of dark and engaging story, but let's still have the goofy, fun, you know, random humor. I mean, the first episode features them fighting lawn gnomes in Gravity Falls. <laughs> and w- and one, of, one of them gets punched in the stomach and pukes up a rainbow. And then they just put yes. that on all the merchandise. Because it's one of the fun... It, it's, it's hilarious, and it's great. But, like, but then you suddenly have, like, those episodes where you learn more about the history of Gravity Falls. You learn, mm-hmm. like, you have characters... Like, unlike Steven Universe and a lot of these other shows that try to pull that, like, every character, every character has been developed in that show so amazingly well. Like, even the side characters get, like, enough moments that you, like, know a good deal about them. Well, like, there's this one, there's the one character, Old Man McGucket. I mean, obviously, if you couldn't tell by his name, he's kind of a joke character. He's your typical. Oh yeah, he, like, like I almost. He's, your, he's a country he almost, bumpkin. He 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 talks. He talks in your typical country accent. He says random goofy things. You think his whole purpose is to basically just be a joke, and then suddenly, out of nowhere, they do this one episode that, like, he's very really integral to the plot now. <laughs> He's integral. He's in, he's integral to the plot, and they made him actually a very sympathetic character. Yeah, like, but, but it didn't take away like his comedy. He's no. still funny. Crazy old man. 
he's still old man McGucket. <laughs> he's still the guy who will just like uh, I just like a show. I, I, that's why I can't really watch Steven Universe anymore. Is because uh, Gravity Falls is doing so much better at establishing a plot and having characters that you know are all developed equally, and you have characters that are flawed. Everyone's getting equal time. And that's, um, except for Wendy, who has still not got her own solo episode, as I was telling you guys earlier. Well, yeah, but Wendy has had enough episodes. Sorry, Kyle, but Wendy has had enough episodes where she is a central character to the plot, and you learn more about her, her background. You, you like you learn enough about her to where she doesn't feel like, oh, she's just there as a joke, or she's there to be Dipper's love interest or anything like I that. I still think that sometimes, but you know. <laughs> That's I don't know, funny. like, because you have that, you know, like, every episode that features her, like, it just seems like it works. Like, I don't look at her and think, oh, she's just there to be Dipper's love interest. <laughs> mm, sorry, Kyle. Yeah, Kyle, Kyle, Kyle wants to get in on this. Yeah, sorry, Kyle. So, about that Gravity Falls. Regale us, please. <laughs> so, anyways, um, I can say when the show first started, it made me want to watch the show. Oh, good. I know that sounds. I mean, I know that sounds dumb, but when you have stuff like what's been recently come out, I've had no desire to watch him at all. From what I've seen, everything like that, I'm just like, eh. It has this one. This one, it actually caught my attention and made me want to watch the show. Like it's got a great. It's got to draw you in somehow, be it from an animation standpoint or. Yeah, and I mean, like it. It touches a bunch of stuff that I actually really like, like like say cryptozoology. Mm. Oh yeah, yeah. Just like shows huge for that. It yeah. I, I um Alex Hirsch is, is you know he's very vocal about like how he's always been into like ciphers and riddles and all that kind of uh, Illuminati code stuff. And like every episode's got like a hidden message in it that if you were you know actually go back and decipher the code gives you like a little extra tidbit to the plot. And, oh, the, uh, the little things at the end of the episode. Credits. Right. Like an, at the end of the credit of every episode, it's got like a weird code and like they change up the, the decipher to, to decode it from time to time. So you have to figure it out. And it's, it's interesting. Yes. It's so, an, int- it's interesting how much of a universe he's crafted. So, I mean, like, from the get-go, the theme song too. It's like beautifully animated. Just the, oh, yeah. the thing where got he some James Baxter freaks out. in there. Well, when he like freaks out about the skeleton and stuff, like that's so well animated. Mm-hmm. Uh, the whole this, opening's really well. Animated. It has like that paint. It has stuff that looks painted and yeah, it's really amazing. Um, so I mean, I, I liked it. It it started off as one of those shows where you're like, okay, this is just gonna be like. Every episode's gonna be something kind of stupid. Mm-hmm. They're gonna hang out, but then it like gets really plot heavy. And even the filler episodes have like some good plot development in it. Something Unlike that... another certain show. <laughs> exactly, are the lesbian just... space rock are we show. Are just gonna rip on Steven Universe's entire episode? <laughs> yeah, I'm just, I'm just saying. It can, well, that's that's what people consider to be the big contender to Gravity Falls is Steven Universe. That's why they have that fandom. You know how there's Super Hulock. Oh yeah, they over the gravity falls. Oh yeah, over, oh no, over the gravity wall. I think because because it's, it's gravity falls. You I, universe. I liked over the garden wall. It was cool and everything, but it's a mini series. Yeah, it's getting it's getting a comic book or it had a comic book. I think I I see that it's getting a comic book. It's like that's kind of cool, but whoop. I still haven't it watched of, it. It was one of those things, like, I'd hate to spoil it for you guys, but it's one of those things where it's like, it was all a dream. So to see it go through a comic book, it's like, really? Like, we already know. Oh, I don't know. Maybe there's more to it. Because Alex Hirsch had a hand in that, too. Didn't he create it? No. I think Pat McHale, who I think worked on Adventure Time, uh, made okay. it. Okay. I've, so, I've heard that it's like a lot of people think of it as like the weird amalgamation of every big name animator right now. Yeah, I think a lot of big names from Cartoon Network were had at least some finger in there. 
but uh but i mean um every episode so far has been pretty pretty plot heavy and i remember um kind of around first season um i was just messing around on youtube i found a video and this guy's like oh i got a theory get ready for this shit you guys and i'm like okay let's hear it out they're like yeah he's got us like stan has got a twin brother Oh, yeah. Here's what I think. And I'm like, no, no, this is stupid shit. Yeah, and then it actually happened to be real. I'm like, oh, fuck. People can actually, like, catch clues. and This actually works. Well, so. It's a well-crafted mystery, too. Yeah, I, I thought that was interesting. Like, someone fucking caught that shit with the... The only clue, really, was uh, different glasses and a time travel shot, and then... It was the swing set. Yeah. And one was broken, and they're like, oh, yeah, here we go. I'm like, oh, fuck, this is actually pretty interesting. Yeah, like, I'm, I'm impressed by all the, like, the little details they put in there and, like, people's ability to pick that apart and find actually find them. I think one reason I love Alex Hirsch was... Um, yeah, I love his responses to things on Twitter. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Like, Alex Hirsch, uh, if anyone doesn't, even if you don't watch Gravity Falls, his Twitter is worth following. But I think one thing that made me really respect Alex Hirsch, besides the fact that I love that he's friends with Weird Al Yankovic. Oh, yeah. A Weird Al actually does the voice of a of a wizard in an episode of Gravity Falls. <laughs> the, the, like, the prob- math wizard from Dungeons and Dragons. Prob- prob- probabilitor. <laughs> probabilitor. <laughs> I I actually had to introduce people to Gravity Falls at work, and I showed them that episode, and this one girl was like, how did I not know about this show? That's awesome. <laughs> but uh, so you know how shipping is a big deal in cartoons nowadays. Mm-hmm. Everyone's all about shipping and, you know, pairing characters. Two characters look at each other. Oh, they're shipped. People love romance. Two characters. Yeah, like people hate. No, people love slash fiction, and they love porn. Oh, God. Well, okay. yeah, okay. Uh, I can't, I can't, I'm not condemning that. I'm not, I mean, I followed a few tags on Tumblr for Steven Universe before it, sure. went, off, before it went off the fucking rails. <laughs> but, um, Alex, Her- someone messaged Alex Hirsch and he asked, like, what are you, are you a bigger fan of, you know, this shipping name or this shipping name? And he said, I don't think characters should be condensed down to being just pairing fodder. Yeah, it's like, kids should be <laughs> and, introduced uh, to interested in Pokemon and Pop Tarts. <laughs> Like, like, I mean, just, just that response, I'm like, God damn, you go, Alex Hirsch. <laughs> my, my favorite one, a fan was like, how the fuck does he carry books in his vest? They're like, there's not enough room. And he's like, it's a cartoon. <laughs> that was the only response he wrote. <laughs> because that's the only response you need. It's like the people who I, this guy who I knew who was trying to, dis- like, said, Pacific Rim was okay, but as an engineering expert, I just couldn't under shut the fuck up and enjoy the really? giant robots. Really, the robots would you have a problem with in Pacific Rim? Not that these yeah. giant kaiju monsters are coming out through a, a dimensional rift Tr- in the ocean. <laughs> Trust me, I just went. You know what? Uh, I just enjoy the movie. <laughs> and, and it's like with Gravity Falls. Really, in a show full of dream demons and tiny uh, law gnomes and the Manators. <laughs> Schmebulock. Schmebulock. But and, and, Schmebulock Senior. And, <laughs> and him pulling a book out of a, a jacket, not fitting construction. That, that's the problem you have. That is what sticks in your craw. That is what <laughs> just drives you nuts. Yeah. To where you can't handle, like, you know what? No. The, you know what? I was, I was with you. Up until I was with you with the lawn gnomes puking rainbows and all that, but. The second you decided to have Dipper pull a vest, <laughs> pull a book out of his vest, I just lost it. Uh, Come I've on, seen, Alex Hirsch, get with I've the program. Seen, I've seen them. They're like, what do you, what do you think of shipping um, Bill and uh, Bill and Dipper? And he's just like, fucking watch the card, dude. Like, stop, stop with this autistic shit. Like, he didn't say that, but uh, he's you can tell he's... around there. You can tell he's doing his best to be, like, you know, nice to the fans, but at the same time, he's like, God, it's a cartoon, people. Just let it go. <laughs> and just, just just, enjoy the cartoon. Uh, just enjoy it. Well, we... I think, honestly, Gravity Falls, my favorite is that 
they reference things, but they don't overdo it. Yeah, like, like, true. Like, just the way he, just the way Alex Hirsch does everything in that show is great. Like my favorite episode, if I had to pick like a favorite episode of Gravity Falls, would have to be the Fight Fighters episode. <laughs> Where they yeah. bring the Street Fighter guy into real life. <laughs> like whatever video games, whatever like cartoons make fun of video games, like or whenever they reference video games, they always go for like the lowest common denominator. Mm-hmm. Like, they'll just make the most generic idea for a game, like Screaming Death Ninja 5 or something, you know, something stupid. Something about, like, right, yeah. Like, you know, they'll just they'll be like, ah, oh, kids like violence and stupidity. But in that episode, there were so many references to video games that were so well done. Like, Street Fighter in particular, they referenced Final Fight, they referenced Donkey <laughs> Kong, Pac-Man, Tron. And, and it, like, he beat the shit out of that guy's car. Oh like, god! Oh my car! <laughs> like no kids gonna worry, get that son. reference. Don't worry, kids. Don't worry, son. I'll buy you a new one. I love being rich, Dad. <laughs> yeah. Like it's like it's great. It's wonderful because it's it's smug commentary on how like stupid kids are nowadays. Like in the one episode with the love god, where. <laughs> That stand- there was a big deal about that one. Oh yeah, because like in that episode, they originally they wanted to. There, there's like a scene where the love god's explaining his powers. Like I can make anybody fall in love. And uh, originally in the scene, it was gonna be two women. He was gonna make them fall in love, but Disney's like, no, no, you, you can't do that. So, <laughs> like, but oh, there's a, there's an animatic test with the two women that you can find. Yeah. And, you know, I'm sure people got really mad about that, even though, you know, you kind of have to realize, well, the show is nationally, or I think it's bro- it's broadcasted in uh, other nations, right? Yeah, that's probably. the that's the worry, though. Yeah, I mean, if they do that, I mean, that could pretty much kind of get them banned, and that could really, dist- you know, there's a, lot of, there's a lot of pitfalls I don't think people think about. I think it'd be great if people were able to just not, you know, fucking make a big deal out of fin- women kissing, but, you know... Fin- finish your thought on, on that before you forget. It was the you... love god. Oh, like, uh, there, was a, there was a scene in the love god where Grunkle... Thank you for pulling me back from that, by the way. <laughs> but uh, Grunkle Stan is trying to get kids... You know, he's trying to get the young people to like him because he's an old man and he wants to fleece, fleece some rubes, as he, call, as he tells him. <laughs> because his whole thing is being a con man. And he makes this balloon of his face that says, you know, I heart kids. But unfortunately, it catches on fire <laughs> as it takes off. And it starts to, and it looks like a monster, and it looks like it's attacking these teens at a festival. And one of the kids says, it's an angry god to destroy us for our bad taste and everything. <laughs> and that line, I have no idea why. I'm not even that old. I'm 28, but for some reason that line just hit me. I could not stop laughing. Oh, God. It's because it, it, it just makes fun of his. It was making fun of hipsters relentlessly. Like, which nothing is, is off. I find kind of ironic because Alex Hirsch looks like the biggest hipster in the world. <laughs> Well, he seems self aware. Every, every time I see him, he's wearing like flannel and shit, and I don't. It doesn't come off as like an ironic thing. It comes off as like he really like messed around in Oregon, and that's like the normal wear. I don't know. He he really comes off more so like you know it's like if he is a hipster, he's self aware of how stupid hipsters can be. Well, good for him. And how silly. Yeah, like it seems like he's. Very self-aware. <laughs> now, the guy who did the video game episode, I know he's famous. Oh, Paul Robertson? Paul Robertson? Yes. Oh, I fucking love yeah, that okay. guy. He did all the now, uh, uh, sprite work for the Scott Pilgrim game. Well, and also, yes, and that, that was fantastic, but he did, like, a Simpsons opening. They actually used it in the show. Yeah. And he's he's done some incredible work. And I remember there was just a big stink with, the, with Tumblr, and they're like, oh... Wait, 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 wait. Hold on, Kyle. You're telling me Tumblr made a big deal about something? <laughs> yes. They looked at they looked at his old work, and they're like, oh, well, he referenced this old video game, and it looks like rape, and he condones rape. So just, just boycott him. Don't watch Gravity Falls anymore because he's in it. And it was just like, are you, wait, are you fucking kidding me? 
you, it was um the picture they got mad if you've ever heard the video game. It's Custer's Revenge. Oh yeah, oh, yeah the old the uh one of the first porn games. Get yes, the and they got mad because they got mad because of pixel dicks going into pixel vaginas. Yeah, you know, a it, game Kyle, that... Kyle, they weren't mad because it was pixel dicks and pixel vaginas. They were mad because it was pixel white man dick in Native American vagina. Yeah, that sounds about right. <laughs> but, uh... Kyle, no, I Kyle... love that guy's work. He yeah. does so, like, amazing work. He's a pretty if good guys, artist. If you guys ever get a was... chance to um, check out his new game, Mercenary Kings. Oh, yeah, I've I need heard to watch about that. that. Uh, I actually have an extra copy, and I would love to play it with people if you guys are interested. <laughs> I'm down. I'm going to have to get it. It's like Metal Slug with that. It's, it's the like, best ever. It's like, metal, it's like Metal Slug, but not as, you know, without the one-hit kills. And it's, it's all his artwork and all the characters. <laughs> like, it's, it's all really well done. I'm all down below, Rocket lawn chairs. No, no rocket launchers. <laughs> but I mean, there there's some pretty great stuff in there. Yeah, but uh, I thought he did another show though. What? I thought he was in another cartoon recently. I have no with idea. His support. I don't know. We're we're getting off topic of Gravity Falls. <laughs> Whatever. I'm sorry, well, Kyle. I was gonna ask you since Andy told us his favorite episode. Do you have a particular favorite? I I can't really think off the top of my head. Would you like me to give me you a, a lot of? Would, would you like to give me a give you a minute to think of something? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Oh. Why don't you come back to me? I'll, I'll pass. <laughs> pass to Mike. All right. I, I do have another point I want to bring up about Gravity Falls when sure. you're done, JD. Oh. When you're done. Okay. Okay. Well, I was gonna say, um, like, I I I think the the first season was like you know pretty consistently good. Uh, I really liked when they brought Bill in, or B- the character Bill Cipher in, at the as like the big main antagonist for the series. You know, at the end of season one. Um, but I almost feel like now that season two has started and is almost over, I, I guess uh, that it's like been consistently getting better each episode. But I, I keep thinking about it, and I think my favorite episode is like the first episode of the um, the second season, uh, where they're having the karaoke party and they summon all the zombies. That is a great episode. Because like I, I don't know how the way to come back. It, yeah, it was like they came out swinging when they came back from uh, the season, um, and just I. I it's like it's not any more fluid than it usually is, but like the animation with the zombies is just—I don't know. I, I think it's like some of the best animation they've had on that show. I, and they had I just, remember. Yeah, they had like all these like light effects coming from the zombies, and uh, I don't know. It was really good, and it just has like my—I don't know why this line I think is so hilarious, but it's the very favorite line of the entire series so far. It's like Dipper was the one thing I asked you to not to oh. do today: raise the dead. What did you do? Raise the dead. <laughs> You know, it's funny, uh, JD, I don't know how to tell you this, but that is almost paralleling a Simpsons line. That's fine. It I, is, isn't it? It's from Dial Z from Z, Dial Z for Zombie, which is on the list, by the way, JD. I'm sorry. Yeah, no, one, no, one, no one watches. No one knows that we were making a Simpsons list in the background. No, I just want to make sure you know. I, okay. I remember my favorite episode, TBH. Okay. okay. Lay it on me, and then Andy can make so, his point. <laughs> I remember a long time ago, back in 2012, when we were all kiddies. Oh, we're so young. And things were so all right. I know. <laughs> so, anyways, there was this episode. I don't know if you've heard of it, but it was called Time Traveler Pig. I've watched all uh, of that. Pretty, pretty, pretty amazing. Am I right? Yeah. But, anyways, so they did this episode. And they time travel, and Justin R- Roland is in it. Oh yeah. But the thing that really got me was they time travel, and they do a bunch of stupid shit. And then at the end, that guy's fixing their problems, and then you watch the old episodes, and he's in those old episodes, <laughs> but you never knew noticed him, <laughs> and like. 
that blew my fucking mind because that was like they planned it out because this is like season or this was like episode seven and then these are like episode one two three that kind of stuff and it was all in sequence it's like fuck they planned it out really well so it's one of those things where they set it up yeah that's it's one of the things that i really admired is that fact uh, Alex Hirsch, like, he said that he has a plan and knows, like, you know, where the show is going. I think he says he has it written out to at least three seasons. Like, he knows where the story is supposed to end. But, like, the amount of planning they put into, like, just minute background jokes, like, we, I think we've talked about it before where they, uh, they, they, they made a reference to Rick and Morty. It's, it's, they're basically the crossover between those two Yeah, shows. and that happened, like, that happened, like, you know, episode 8 of this show, and then it happened, like, episode 14, and it happened, like, three months later. Yeah. And someone put those two and two together that that happened. Yeah, it's like, you just... There's just these tiny little, almost insignificant things in the background, and when you see a, a future episode, you go back, and like, oh shit, that was there the whole time. <laughs> yeah. So that's... I don't know. That's it's crazy, man. Madness. Yeah, it's it's a very well put together show in that sense. I enjoy it. So, since we've got all of that squared away, what about our own theories and bullshit that's going on since there's still an episode or so left? Uh, I don't. I'm just honestly enjoying the ride. Well, for the longest time, you okay? This is gonna be well. We've kind of done spoilers, but. From here on, if you haven't watched like the latest episodes of Great Falls, there probably will be spoilers. Uh, I assume you guys have watched like the last one that came out about the unicorn. Well, I'm yeah, kind of the one cool. that told you guys about it. Well, I know you thank did. You. I sent you the link this it. morning. <laughs> thank I you, did. Kyle. I, I wa- yes, thank you. I watched it, and it was, it was delightful. But for like the longest time, I was quest- I, I There's the big question of like, what the fuck does Bill actually want? And in this episode, they show you that he basically wants to summon all the demons from hell. <laughs> he just wants to summon all the geometrical monsters. So there's going to be circle monsters and square hate monsters. Romb- there's going to be a hate rhombus in there, I'm sure. <laughs> the hate rhombus. <laughs> yeah. uh, I love Dimitri Martin jokes. <laughs> uh, I actually like the wee bear bears. <laughs> I still haven't I don't watched know, the I bear can... bears. I watched the first episode, and I thought it was funny. I thought it was exactly what I expected, and I was not disappointed. And then I'll have to give it a chance. I don't, I don't remember who I hate. Is it Dimitri Martin or Bo Burnham? Because I actually really do not like Bo Burnham. Bo Burnham's the I mean, one that sings. Huh? Bo Burnham's the one that sings. Yeah, I fucking don't like that guy. Why? I don't know. I remember... My friend was like, oh my god, this is so funny. Watch this. This is so great. And I didn't laugh once. <laughs> and I felt I felt like an inhuman monster. Like, did I lose a <laughs> sense of comedy? Monster. Well, I mean, besides the point, I was just like, fuck, did I lose my sense of humor? Is this what kids think is funny these days? I but you basically, you basically pulled a Principal Skinner? <laughs> yeah. No, it's the children that are wrong. <laughs> That's really what it is. But anyways, what do you know? Another reference JD doesn't get. Aww. I know, right? Well, do you? Well, since you brought it up, Kyle, do you have theories of your own? Well, well yeah. <laughs> well, I this. feel. See, this is the thing. On 4chan, they're like, "Okay, so the new, you know, the new trailer is out. Why the fuck are they leaving their house? If their house is protected." Why the fuck are they leaving their house? He right. said he's going to get someone outside. And then he flashes, like, the entire cast. Yeah. Like, every so, side character. So my thing is, I think the whole whatever, he's going to possess someone. It's either going to be sibling versus sibling, since he's already done it to Dipper and he kind of encrypted his mind already in this new one, mm-hmm. might be Mabel because she's not as strong as him. Or it might be brother against brother and be the two stands fighting each other. I think or, it's Gideon. Well, 
I don't, I don't know, because he made, he made a deal with yeah, Gideon at the end yeah, of the uh, I, I want to know what's right. going on with that, because he says, like, all right, I I'm think, ready to make a deal, and they just kind of cut away from that. <laughs> I, I know, but I think that's, like, too easy. Like, that would bother me. I'm like, that's... Like, if Zeus happened to get it, the possession, that would be fucked up. He would have to fight his, his big hero and stuff. I, get, I could see that. <laughs> yeah, like, I mean... I, I, want, I want something like that. I don't want Gideon, because it's like, oh... Okay then, I guess. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm just curious what what is, like JD mentioned. I'm curious what is going to happen there. It's clear Gideon wants wants revenge. Yeah, but I mean, they made a deal. The uh, J.K. Simmons made a deal for more. Oh yeah, I, I'm just I'm more so curious about what what is that? How is that going to factor into it? Because I think it's going to be it's going to be him getting out of jail through him. It has to be just something stupid like that. Yeah, you never know. I mean, that's a, that's the beauty of the show. You really can't tell. <laughs> that's yeah, it's true, like, yeah. I mean, you can... We've, there's some things we've picked up on, like, you know, the whole twin thing, but, like, for... Uh, I'd say, like, a good 90% of the time, like, a lot of the stuff is just, like, when it comes out, and they tell you what it is, and, like, would it ever piece that together? <laughs> yeah, I mean, but that's why se- I... But it seems like, oh, well, of course that's what it was <laughs> at the same time. I mean that's why I really don't take too much stock in theories because I'm I'm honestly just enjoying the ride. <laughs> I'm also just flat out terrible at coming up with bizarre the- like you know theories like that. Yeah, I mean uh, Tumblr likes to post you know their theories and I I enjoy. They also like to post them. incest porn. Yeah, they do. Um, I was like that's that's as much as their theories go. Oh god, and that'll never happen. <laughs> thank God. But you know, now I th- th- there's a one thing I have been curious about, and I have no theories on it. Just that the fact that I want to know what it all means is the uh, what is affectionately referred to, like just the Bill Cipher wheel. Uh, you know, it's this image, like it's got Bill Cipher, and he has like this wheel with all these symbols on it. And we've been slowly piecing together like what the symbols mean because they all like attribute to uh, characters in the show. And I think there's a few that we're still trying to place a person to. And I'm kind of just, like, wondering, like, if this wheel, like, has any... Like, what the significance of it is. If, like... They're all bound together by a deal. I bet you that's what it is. But, like, some of... I mean, some of these characters haven't even met, uh... Bill. So... But, um, yeah, just, the, I, th- I think the thing is, like, a lot of these people, uh, on the wheel, like, I, some of them haven't even met Bill. Like, I think, uh, I think like, Robbie's on the wheel, and I think Pacifica's on the wheel, but, so I'm, I'm wondering, it's like, if they are all making deals with Bill, it's like, what kind of deal are they gonna make? Well... Remember, Robbie made a CD or something, a hypnotizing CD. Oh, yeah. So I think it's just... They never explained that. (laughs) No, they never did. So I think it's just stupid shit like that, where it's like, you know... uh, Yeah. Where it's like, man, I'd sell my soul for a chocolate bar. (laughs) I think it's just something stupid like that, where he wanted Wendy to call, like, fall back for her or something. Yeah. I, I don't know, like... I think that's what it is. There's my my theory. Yeah, that's a that's a good theory, and it's funny. Like uh, one thing I was gonna bring up, since you mentioned Robbie, like just one more thing I just really want to say about Gravity Falls that I think is incredible is that it has stayed away from so many of like the tropes that shows get bogged down with. Like Robbie started off, he was the bully of the show. You know, he was always portrayed as Dipper's rival. And, and now, suddenly he's he's not like, but it's not like they just suddenly made him like a good guy or anything. He just like he just it, it, was. like I don't know. You, like it's just amazing how the show developed that character so subtly in the background to where he had like you know episodes focused on him, but not. But mm-hmm. it, it, once again, this the pacing and everything about the show just amazes me. Yeah. 
And I think you could say the same thing uh, for the Pacifica character. Chris, yeah. It was basically, you know, it was Mabel's rival. And uh, a couple episodes back, uh, they did a whole episode with... Uh, it was really odd, because they, like, paired her and Dipper together. Now, that's sort of the whole thing. Yeah. But, um, you know, you really got to see her backstory and kind of makes her a more sympathetic character to the fact where you could actually see her, you know her being friends with everybody that was a fun episode too the uh the mini golf <laughs> thing with pat Oswalt, or yeah. the fucking big john died or whatever oh, I, it was i i meant oh. the i meant the uh the cabin the, one the, the ghost house one with the bleeding animal heads <laughs> yeah but that that was the like kind of turning point Right. Or she ate a taco, a fucking couch taco, and like <laughs> the, the backseat taco. Back yeah. taco. How do you have a whole? How do you just have a whole taco in your backseat? It's a cartoon. <laughs> All right, yeah, enough. don't question it, man. Don't be like those people. Oh. Why don't you ask Alex Hirsch? <laughs> <laughs> He'll just tell me it's a fucking cartoon to get over it. <laughs> but um. Uh, it's just it's really amazing to me how the show has gone in the span of the two seasons because it went on that really big hiatus. Okay, that is my biggest sticking point with the show is how freaking inconsistent it is with when it's on. And I know it's not the staff's problem; it is Disney's problem. But I just don't understand this. How Cartoon Network? Granted, they're working on eleven minute, uh, you know, eleven minute cartoons rather than half hours of Gravity Falls is. But how is it that? Cartoon Network can have the their shows go almost all year without a break, but there's just s- months where Gravity Falls isn't on. They'll air one episode, and it'll be off for another three months. And it's and like... You can't split it. But I'm just saying, it's like, why are the episodes so scattered? Like, this last slew of episodes has only been like three episodes. There's like, okay, we're going to air an episode, wait three weeks, here's another episode, wait another three weeks, and it's like... Well- well, not only that, but they're like, oh, England got it first. Yeah, yeah. and it's, it airs overseas at really random times, so it's like, for a show that is probably your most popular cartoon you've got, why are you fucking with its schedule so much? And it's like, uh, it's like if you don't have enough episodes to air, that's fine. Just wait till you've got a good, you know, six episodes, and just air them for six weeks. Therein lies the mystery, right? <laughs> That, that's the greatest Maybe mystery. you should ask Alex Hirsch that one, and that would be better than I asking I think he says he doesn't physics. even know why that happens, because that's, that's not in his control. Yeah. They, they make episodes... I think he even says they've got a bunch of episodes they're just sitting on. Yeah. He's like, we don't know why they haven't aired yet. Well, at least he's honest. Yeah, which, I, I don't know. It's like... Disney's always done that. Like, if it's not a live-action sitcom, it's you know, not as a concern to them. And like, you know, kids are dumb. We'll just air it whenever we want. Or you gotta make that Hannah Montana money, man. Oh my God. It's like the same thing they did with like Tron and Motor City. They just like aired it whenever they felt like it. They changed it all the time. So no one knew it was on. And before you knew it, they got canceled. And and then, then they'll ask like, Oh, well, nobody watched the show. We don't well, know. Cause no do. one knows when it's on. I'd, I'd hate to pull this card, but I don't think kids question when a new episode's coming out. I question as much it. as adults do. It's true. Well, I'm questioning it, and I'm okay. <laughs> I think Disney knows that Gravity Falls is watched more by teenagers and like people in their twenties rather than like the little kids. Yeah, but I always think of the pitch and the, like I don't know. I've only done it once, but they're like, "So what is this marketed towards?" And you're like, "Well, fuck, like seven to twelve year olds." I'm sure that's around what it's marketed to. Yeah, I mean, it's it's marketed at, like, you know, pre-teens, but I, I like to think they've seen the social media by now that, you know, it has a lot of older fans, and it's almost why I think they get away with a lot more adult humor sometimes. True. I mean, the funniest fucking thing, like, I actually laughed out loud. <laughs> um, I'm, I'm pretty much a connoisseur on humor, where oh, things don't get sure. me to laugh okay. sometimes. But the whole butterfly thing, where it was like a police sting, oh, and the newest God. episode was that funny was as fuck. Everything, no, everything about that episode was funny as fuck. Which one was this again? 
the unicorn episode that we oh, watched. Oh, yeah, okay, yeah. <laughs> that, that, the whole that police epi- sting. <laughs> that episode has reaffirmed that Grenda is my favorite secondary character. <laughs> I love Grenda. <laughs> The scene where she, the scene where they're like rallying to, you know, figure out how to get the unicorn, and Grenda smashes the, the rock, smashes the rock on her head. It's just, I have no idea why oh, I was, I was in tears because just how fucking ridiculous Grenda it was. Is a treasure. <laughs> just bellowing. It's, just like, it's like we, it's like we can only uh, summon the unicorns if we have the deepest, most bellowing <laughs> chant. It's like I got Come it. Come on, to bed. <laughs> It's like she's not even like ashamed of like her man voice or like her really gross tendencies. Yeah, <laughs> no, I, they actually, just... they actually they proved in that episode that's what got her. That's why the prince from that one episode really liked Grenda. No, oh, yeah, because she's like you're not like other girls. You're gross and all that other stuff. But her boyish charms. Her boyish charms. <laughs> but uh, I thought like, I don't know. The show just I love it. I really, I'm really glad that it's been maintaining. It hasn't gone grim dark to where every episode has. Like, I'm glad I don't have to see a thousand posts about how this episode made me cry. <laughs> I've seen posts where people saying cry, but I do agree. It, like, like you were saying earlier, I think it really has a good handle on uh, balance because, like, for every fucking scary thing that happens, because I'll, I'll be honest, the episode with a shapeshifter. Oh, that that episode that is like fucked uh, up. <laughs> that episode set the standard, I think, for like scary like kids cartoon like yeah, stuff. Yeah, well, well, like the fucking shapeshifter monster is like, well, which which one of you should I turn into? Should I turn into Dipper or Mabel? It's like, fuck it, I'm gonna turn into both, and turns like this horrible amalgamation yeah. dual mouth slime creature. <laughs> it's... You you know what really pissed me off? Now that I think about it, what's that? It was. It was the fishing episode or whatever, where they're like, "Oh yeah, here's here's the big sea monster," and I'm like, "Oh shit, this is fucking cool." And then it turned out to be a robot, and I'm like, "They were just fighting gnomes and shit." Can't tell me that there's no, but I think they re- retconned that. Like there was a think, monster swimming. I think well, the, the, the mermaid, the merman. Well, I mean, like, was there... I feel like at the end of that episode, they showed there the real was a, I, mean. I think between the first and second season, they had a bunch of these little shorts. Oh, the and, shorts and, and were then great. There, and then there was a... I think there was a short where they're, like, they're out on the lake, and the little island in the middle of the lake is a giant head. <laughs> yeah. It just comes out and tries to eat them. and But it's, like, all shot from a, from a handy cam, so <laughs> it's got that found footage kind of look. So do you think they're ever going to uh, tap in on McGucket's, like, Doomsday Robot, since that was a thing and they showed, like, I who am, knows? I am, in, it? I am in the firm belief that anything that is mentioned on the show is significant. Because even yeah. the most... Or it can come back. It can, anything can come back, anything can be a detail, because as we've proven, like, all throughout the first season, there was throwaway lines... Or just little background jokes that like seem so insignificant, but you know later on yeah. is like very. Ted Strange, Ted Strange is going to be the uh, Antichrist. <laughs> yeah, I don't think they can get away with saying the Antichrist on a, on a on the Disney Channel, but fucking Night Vale, dude. Oh my god, I need to catch up on Night Vale. I haven't listened to it in a while. I need to actually listen to it. I like Night Vale. It's quirky. I got. I got. It was one of those things where like, I was. I'm really into like paranormal radio and stuff like that. I listen to like Coast to Coast AM and. I love George Nori. I want George yeah. Nor- I want George Nori to good. to to guest star on Gravity Falls. That would make me so happy. I, I mean, they've already had they've already had Stephen Fry and Neil deGrasse Tyson. <laughs> yeah, I mean, was yeah Stephen Fry was on there. He was Waddles, wasn't he? No, Neil deGrasse Tyson was Waddles. <laughs> Oh, I always get the two confused. I could have sworn Stephen <laughs> Fry was on there, but um, I you know Night Vale was like I, 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 people had to keep reminding me. Well, it's not supposed to be like a paranormal talk show. It's, it's no, it's just like the all this paranormal fun. shit happens, yeah. and they just kind of treat it as like oh man, yeah, it just happens. You know, yeah, like the shadowy like, government that they're all just okay with. <laughs> yeah, and then the the cat, the 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 glow cloud. <laughs> Yeah, the glow cloud. 
I'm surprised. I, I'm surprised that it's just. I don't know. I think. I think the show just has that really good hook to it too, because kids love paranormal stuff. Yeah, I, th- I, I think it's smart enough for. I honestly think the closest, like, if there was like a soulmate for that show, it'd probably be Rick and Morty. Yeah. Yeah, which is which is hilarious because like Justin Roiland and uh, Alex Hirsch are basically like best friends. Yeah. Have you, seen, right. have you seen the picture that they've drawn together? <laughs> no, I want to see it that. Was, it was Grunkle Stan and uh, Rick sitting on a couch crying together, watching TV. Oh. So it's like they're watching something really sad, I, and uh, right. they both drew their characters. It looked fucking cool. I will have to find that. I know I did see... Uh, I, I cannot remember who did it for the life of me, but there was this comic on Tumblr where... Uh, <laughs> it's a uh, uh, Grunkle Ford. He's in the inter or interdimensional customs from Rick and Morty, oh, <laughs> and he's God. calling Rick about like, "All right, Rick, how do I get this shit through customs?" <laughs> it's like, of course he would go there. Why my, wouldn't he? <laughs> my favorite thing is, uh, I think, I think they did a Vine or something, and it was Alex Hirsch and um, like Matt Chapman or something. Oh yeah, and they were cool. yelling. They were yelling at each other in their their voices. Wouldn't he like these being he was like Grunkle standing strong bad? Yeah, he's like strong bad, get out of here or I'll shoot you. And he's like, Shut up at your face. <laughs> Shut up at your face. I, I liked it when uh, him and JG Quintel were being Mordecai Oh and, uh, my god. If you haven't I, th- I think it was the Nerdist podcast or whatever, but there's a like it's like a writer's podcast, uh you, if you haven't listened to it, go back and listen, and it's this hour-long talk of just J.J. Quintel and Alex Hirsch talking about how they got started and, like, their whole thing. And then at the end, there's, like, this stupid little riff between Mordecai and Uncle Stan. Yeah, I heard it. Uh, as a fan of regular show, I really appreciated it, because yeah. I love Uncle Stan. Yeah. I love that voice, man. That is such a good voice. It's it's weird because, like, how many voices Alex Hirsch does on the show. <laughs> Like I think he he's Grunkle Stan. I kn- I think he's Bill. Is he? I think he's uh, Tyler Cutebaker. Uh, Cutebaker. Yeah. He- <sighs> Shit. I'm trying to remember like who all he voices because he voices a couple of the main characters. I want to say he voices Zeus, but I don't know if that's true. He does Grunkle Stan, Zeus, Old Man McGucket, Bill Cipher, and additional voices. Which is weird because like a lot of like most of those voices I wouldn't say came from the same person. Like especially Zeus, like does not sound like anybody. Yeah, sound I like love him. Zeus. So it's, he's it's, also the producer, writer, storyboard artist, and voice actor. So that's that's quite living good. That, living the dream. I aspire to be this man. I didn't know he worked on fish hooks. I did not know that either. That, that is, doesn't that doesn't surprise me with the kind of. Goofy humor. I've never actually been. watched Fish Hooks. It's not Fish bad. Hooks was fucking funny. Like uh, I, I, I liked I, Fish I, Hooks. I watched it a few times and I enjoyed it. I I think like Maxwell Adams who made Billy and Mandy was working on that or somebody. Yeah. Was. It wouldn't surprise me. Yeah. And now he's trying to make a puppet show. Uh, I, I donated. Surprise me. <laughs> I donated to that and he updates like every other month and I haven't got my shit yet. Yeah, he's. I saw something about it the other day, because I think I follow him on Tumblr, and he posts what's going on with that, and I guess he's hitting a lot of snags with it, but, you know. Just like Armacrog. Yeah. Yeah. So, I guess to wrap this up, uh, next week, well, maybe not next week, I guess in the next couple weeks, uh, I think we're getting the... uh, finale of, you know, this season of Gravity Falls... What do you guys think is going to go down? <laughs> I, I already know. fucking said. Yeah, I mean, oh. Kyle already gave his theory. I'm, as I said, I'm just, I'm just waiting for the ride because I'm sure whatever happens is going to be fucking great. I've not been disappointed so far. I mean, the season one finale was awesome. I mean, the the show just, show just keeps getting better. I have no reason to doubt that whatever. How it ever, however it ends is going to satisfy. Verily. Well, 
Do you guys have anything else to say to sing the praises of Gravity Falls? I yeah. think everyone. I think everyone should watch it. If you're not, it's on Disney X. I think it's on Disney, and then they re-air it on Disney XD. And I really hope that they do make those Disney Infinity figures. Oh, I do too. I would buy those in a heartbeat. I would. <laughs> I think Dipper and Mabel should be. Oh wait, I didn't get to speak on how one quick thing. Sure. It's because of Gravity Falls. I can't watch Bob's Burgers. Why? Alex. I prefer Christy Shaw. I prefer her so much as Mabel than I do as Lily. Oh, yeah. It's like the same basic voice, but like, like I'll admit, I kind of, I really liked Bob's Burgers at first, but then it kind of started to become, I don't know, maybe I just caught a bad string of episodes, but it started to become every other, you know, sitcom family thing. It's like, ha ha ha, the dad's pathetic and the kids are crazy. Yeah, but, I, I still enjoy Boss Burgers, but... Um, I don't know, the, the more I watch the show, though, like the more I'm thinking, like, man, I just really, really like Christy Shaw more as Mabel. I noticed, yeah, I, like, I, ever I, since Gravity Falls, she's been popping up in everything. Yeah, she's in everything, but I do agree. I, I think I think she does better as Mabel than she does as Louise, but... Well, she's a really popular voice actress, and she's actually funny. Like, yeah. she... True. Like she knows how to, she she knows comedy. She knows how to be funny. She knows she knows she doesn't rely on stupid like she doesn't she doesn't shoehorn herself into one particular type of comedy. She is very versatile. Yeah. Now, hey, as as far as the Disney of Infinity stuff goes, um, I can see him doing Gravity Falls since they there, there's that shoehorn Phineas and Ferb in there. Uh, actually, there is a Gravity Falls level. There is? Yeah, I, I know uh, there's, like, a little disc for it or something like that. Oh, no, somebody made one. Oh. And I, think oh it's, I think it was actually made by people from Disney because, obviously, the big draw of... Uh, I, I got Disney Infinity 3.0 because, you know, Star Wars and all. <laughs> and now I have, like, a legion of those figures staring at me right now. They love you. But, um... Yeah, there's an episode where you have to find... I mean, there's a uh, created level called Where's Waddles? Oh. <laughs> where you have to find... You have to help Mabel find Waddles. <laughs> That's adorable, and I want to go find And the gra- the, someone recreated... like I, I think it was made by Disney. I, if not, either way, it's impressive. But someone made the Mystery Shack. Um, the Gravity Falls theme plays in the background. That's amazing. I want to find this now. It's now, pretty cool. I can always I, try and play through it. And do a I, I will play. say, if, if I was given the option between Darkwing Duck and then Gravity Falls, I would have to go with Darkwing Duck. <laughs> well, I know you would, Kyle. I, I would want both. Like I know Shauna would really like to have Darkwing Duck. Just, you know, make 4.0. It's like, alright, here, we're getting all the fan-favorite Disney characters in. No, just no more, no more new point O's. Just give us the figures. <laughs> Where they're like, "Hey guys, let's put Movie Ellis in because everybody loves Movie Ellis." Fuck that shit. Yeah, that was pretty bad. Gravity Falls for Kingdom Hearts. Yes. Well, Maybe. apparently, apparently, <laughs> uh, Kingdom Hearts Mickey is going to be in there, but that was like the D twenty three exclusive. I yeah, thought, I think. I, go, I, I thought thing it goes was like if you. It was like with the one point O where you bought all the figures, you got a. A lightsaber, but this time you just get a keyblade. That no, they, like... they released like an actual figure that I think is like two hundred bucks now. Oh, like, fuck yeah, it. It. If it you want to like... find it on the um, website. It sounds like, oh, if you beat Super Smash Brothers on hard mode without <laughs> getting hit once, you'll unlock Goku. <laughs> this sounds like that shit. But except this Maybe. is real. You did get the lightsaber. If you had rich parents. Eh. Uh, Anyways, is that about it for I, this I one? Think, I think that's about I, it. Alrighty, I'm good with that. Well, anyway, uh, that was our, uh, you know, hour of us sucking Gary Falls' dick, which, you know, I'm it's not a a well deserved dick. Put. It's a well-deserved dick to suck. <laughs> Much fellating. Um, but... Thank you for listening to this week's Ink and Paint Club podcast. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it. Truly, I do. Um, Be sure to fill out your surveys. Yes, um, I'll, I'll put a link to it in the description. Uh, we were doing we're doing a survey, uh, basically just a couple quick questions like, "Hey, what's good with the show? What can we fix with the show?" Because we're just we're still trying to get better. Uh, you know, thinking of new ways to 
reach out and, you know, do what you guys want. And I, I could get a raise if you pull it out. <laughs> Kyle, could be make, Kyle could be making Kyle's five cents as opposed to his three cents. Kyle's yeah. getting on thin ice if he doesn't start <laughs> producing content. <laughs> I don't know, man. It's this close, Kyle. This close to being fired. You brought that wall from home, but I'll still take it. <laughs> you know, you guys joke about that, and then it's like, almost true. Oh, no. <laughs> I don't think it's almost true at all, but okay, fine. Well, take it to well, that dark area. Well, as far as Amazon goes. Oh. Poor Kyle. Yeah. I'm sorry. Anyway. Anyways. Uh... I'll put links to uh, our Facebook and our Tumblr <laughs> pages if you'd like to follow us there. Uh, and again, please share this episode with uh, any you know anywhere you can. Uh, we we really would appreciate that, and you know we need to build our listenership. So that'd be cool. And again, uh, there's links to our personal pages in there as well if you would like to follow us there. So uh, we'll be back next week uh, to do more news and more talking about cartoons or stuff. Uh, Y'all have anything else to say? Night, everybody. Hold the trigger. Uh, Oh, I just want to also say uh, there's no there's no fussing when you're on hustle. Yes. Callback jokes. Good night.